I was driving home from work pretty late one night. I often worked late, and during this time would leave work at about 10.30 p.m. and get back home at about 11 or so. My job was in the city, and I lived a ways outside of it in a much more quiet area. After leaving my job, I would take a freeway back for most of the drive and then exit onto a highway. One time, when I was working earlier and there was a traffic jam, I found a shortcut to get home faster. It was a few more turns, but no stoplights, and in my opinion, easier driving. Or at least, driving that I liked better. Depending on traffic, it would either be slightly faster or slightly slower. On a night like this, when there was virtually no traffic because it was late, it was probably slightly longer, but I was in a habit of driving the shortcut route. It had started when I worked earlier shifts, and I got off when the roads were busy. On this night, I was taking some back roads to my house. These roads were very quiet, with some woods and occasionally quiet neighborhoods or people's houses on the sides. I was probably about 10 minutes away from my house. The roads that I was driving on were very quiet. I really wasn't seeing any other vehicles. This is exactly how I liked it, and it made for easy driving. As I was going down a straight spot in the road, I saw something up ahead. There was what looked like some kind of construction going on. As I got closer, I saw a few orange cones and then a person holding a sign on the right. It was one of those stop signs that lights up and a construction worker holding it directs traffic. There was a man in an orange vest holding the sign and standing on the side of the road. Now I was on a one lane road there was a lane for traffic going in the opposite direction as well. However, that lane was blocked by the two orange construction cones that were there. I began slowing down as I got closer. When I did, I was starting to wonder what exactly was going on here. There was only one person that I could see, the guy holding the sign. No other construction workers in sight. And other than the few cones, I didn't know what kind of work was being done. But still, I didn't pay it all that much attention. I was tired from a long day of work and just wanted to get home. I slowed my car down and the guy was holding the stop sign so I came to a stop. When I did, the guy holding the sign started walking into the middle of the road right in front of my car. I remember that the guy was about average height, had long dark brown hair, and a bit of a goatee. When he started walking over to my car is when I started to really wonder what exactly was going on. The guy then stopped about a foot away from my car directly in front of it. He was just kind of looking at me, but not saying anything or communicating in any way. I was just sitting there with a puzzled look on my face. I saw the guy looking back behind my car, and I sort of saw something out of the corner of my eye in my side mirror as well. I looked back and saw another man. This guy was not a construction worker. He came from seemingly the woods on the side of the road. It was really bizarre. But even more strange was that this man was holding what appeared to be a baseball bat. He was approaching my car from behind and about 50 feet away if I had to guess. I wondered what on earth was happening. I just wanted to drive away. There seemed to be no real construction going on, and this whole thing was beginning to look like a trap. Meanwhile, the guy holding the sign was still there, stopping me from going. I rolled down my window just to crack and asked what was going on. The guy did not answer me. The man with the bat was still approaching from behind and now getting closer. I knew I needed to get out of there and I suddenly put my car into reverse. I backed up just a few feet. When I did, the man with the bat was less than 10 feet away. Then I veered to the left extremely fast and swerved away from the man holding the sign. He tried to go in front of me but was not fast enough and I drove away. I ran over the two orange cones but luckily they were the smaller kind. As I sped away from there, I saw the two men now standing together in the middle of the road. I felt lucky to have narrowly escaped that situation. Before I got home, I called the police and reported what happened. But I'm guessing by the time an officer got there, the men were gone. I continued to drive that same route home after that. It was just a routine that I didn't really think to change. Well, just about a week after the incident, I was driving home once again. It was around the same time, maybe 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night. I came up to just about the same part on the quiet road. I could not believe my eyes when I saw the guy holding a stop sign again and the two cones on the road in the same exact spot as before. How could this be happening? As I got closer, I could see that it was the same guy. 
It was literally the exact same situation as the week prior. I did not slow down at all. In fact, I sped up slightly. When I got closer, the man took a step into the road and started waving his arm to try to get me to stop. I went to the left and into the other lane. I mowed down the two small orange cones and kept driving as the man stood on the other side of the road with a stop sign. I called the cops once again immediately after. That situation made me really angry how the guy was back out there in the same exact spot. I really don't know if they were found after that because I didn't hear anything about it. I also didn't see them again after that though. It was a trap and I'm not sure exactly what the guy's plan was. Maybe it was to steal my car or maybe something else. That area on the road where they had set up was a very quiet area. There were no houses, buildings, or anything like that in the immediate area. Plus, it was a long straightaway, so they could see who was coming from a long distance away. I'm hoping that they were never able to actually stop anybody. I have a job in the city. It's a major city, with all of the tall buildings and everything that you would expect. My house is about a 20 minute drive, and I commute to and from work every day. It isn't too bad, but there often is rush hour traffic, especially on the way home. This event took place about four months ago, and after a long day of work. I got done at 5 p.m., which is when many other people do. Many times I'm able to leave a little bit earlier, but on this day, I didn't. There was rush hour traffic and many other cars on the freeway. I would take the freeway for about 10 minutes, then the final 10 minutes of my drive would be on quieter roads. So just about 5 minutes into the drive, things were starting to get really backed up. We were crawling along the freeway, and I was in the far right lane of 4 total lanes. The one in the far left was the carpool lane. We started moving a little bit, getting up to maybe 40 miles per hour. Still slow, but faster than we had been moving. At that point, there was a little bit of an open space in the lanes next to me. I saw a car come up from behind, two lanes over. When it got about even with me, it changed into the lane next to me without a turn signal. But then, it kept going and cut into my lane right in front of me. I had maybe a car length and a half between the car in front of me. I had to slam on my brakes to avoid hitting the guy. He had no turn signal on, so I didn't even know that he was turning. I honked my horn and was pretty ticked off. The guy was now right in front of me. I cooled off after a minute or so as traffic continued to lighten up. Cars moved around a little and the guy that cut me off went out of sight, passing some cars. I also switched lanes to pass a semi-truck. After that though, traffic started to slow down again and get congested, and just a couple of minutes later I saw the car who had cut me off again. He had gotten stuck behind a semi-truck, and there was a line of cars passing him, which is where I was. I noticed a little bit of a gap between myself and the car in front of me. I sped up, not wanting to let him in, remembering how he had screwed me before. He started to try to move over in front of me, but couldn't. I passed him by, and he got in line behind me. Unfortunately, the person behind me was nice and let him in. As soon as traffic lightened up a little more, and we got moving again, the guy swerved around me. It was borderline reckless, and he then cut me off again. I had enough of this guy and just wanted to get away from him. Plus, my exit was coming up. I switched lanes to the right. I then saw the guy start to slow down. When he did, I passed him and saw him flipping me off. I wasn't going to let this bother me. I knew that I didn't do anything wrong, and he was driving like an idiot. Soon, I changed lanes again, but noticed the guy changed lanes, and he was still behind me. When I took my exit off of the freeway, I saw the guy change lanes suddenly and take the exit behind me as well. This was a little bit concerning because I did not want this crazy guy following me home. As I drove down one road, he was right behind me the entire time. I changed roads to another one and he was still there. The longer that he followed me, the more frustrated I became. I could not believe this guy. How crazy do you have to be to follow somebody home after cutting them off? When I got to my street, I wanted to confront him and give him a piece of my mind. I arrived back home and pulled into my driveway. When I did, the man stopped at the end of my driveway but didn't go in. I live in a pretty quiet neighborhood and have a somewhat long driveway and large front yard, so I was surprised that he would follow me all the way back but not go into my driveway. After I parked though, I got out of my car. 
I was feeling brave, I guess, because I didn't feel in any danger at all. I think I was more mad than anything. After I got out, I walked behind my car and looked out to the man. He was still inside of his car with the engine running. I yelled out to him, asking what his problem was. Then, suddenly, the man started driving. He started going up my driveway and heading straight for me. It was like he was trying to run me over. I jumped back and ran behind my car, which was all I had time to do. He got close, but then slammed on his brakes and stopped just a few feet away from the back of my car. Then he turned to the left, where I was, and started driving forward. I just ran around to my backyard, trying to get away from him. He didn't hit me and stopped at the end of my driveway. After I had made it around to the back of my house, I heard some tires screeching and finally the sounds of him driving away. When I was sure that he was gone, I walked back out to the front yard. I saw some tire marks in my driveway and saw that the guy had also ran over my mailbox. But other than that, everything was fine. Of course, I called the police and reported him. But unfortunately, in the midst of all this, I didn't remember his license plate number. Since this experience, I feel like I've become more of a defensive driver. Luckily, I haven't had any more problems with people on the road. I also haven't seen that guy since. This happened a couple of years ago. I was driving back home one night on a quiet road. There was a highway that I had recently turned off of to get to my house. I was still about 10 minutes away from home though. As I was driving along that road, suddenly my car started slowing down. I didn't know what was going on at first because my car always ran great. It was only a couple of years old at the time and never had any problems. Then I realized that I had ran out of gas. The light had come on earlier and I had simply forgot about it. My car came to a stop and I felt really stupid about making such an obvious mistake. My first thought was to call a friend and ask them to get me some gas, but when I took out my phone, I wasn't getting a signal. In this area, it wasn't that big of a surprise. I tried and tried for like 10 minutes, but it just wouldn't work. Plus, it was pretty late at night, almost midnight, so even if I could get my phone to work, my friends were probably asleep by now. I knew the area really well and knew that there was a gas station just about a mile away. It would be about a 20 minute walk, but the weather was nice, so I decided to just walk and get some gas and then bring it to my car. It really wasn't all that big of a deal. I got out of my car and luckily had a small gas container in the back. It was empty, but I kept it in my car mainly to buy gas for my lawnmower, so it worked out well that I had it in there. After getting out of my car, I started to walk along the side of the road. Now, the roads were very quiet. Since my car had ran out of gas, maybe one or two other cars had passed me by. I hadn't even really noticed. The road did not have a sidewalk or anything, so I was just walking a few feet off the shoulder in the grass. Surrounding the road on both sides was somewhat dense woods. I remember that when I got a ways up from my car, I heard a car starting to come down the road behind me. It was coming from the opposite direction back where my car was. I heard the sound of the car then slowing down and I stopped to look behind me. I saw a pickup truck coming to a stop next to my car on the road. They were probably stopping to see if I needed any help. I turned around and thought about asking whoever it was for a ride to the gas station. What I saw though was a man hopping out of the passenger side of the truck and another guy get out of the driver's door. Then they put what appeared to be ski masks over their face and approached my vehicle. I was confused and stopped no longer wanting them to see me. And I'm pretty sure that they hadn't seen me and didn't know that I was there. They probably thought that I was still inside of my car. I moved back, closer to the woods, but kept watching. They looked inside of my windows. One of them used his phone as a flashlight to look in. The other guy knocked on one of the windows. They also tried opening all of the doors. After this happened, the guys looked in my direction suddenly for whatever reason. They seemed to notice me, because right after, one of the guys started walking over to me. The other walked back over to their truck. When I saw this, I turned to keep walking to the gas station. I heard the sound of one of the men running, and I looked back to see the first guy sprinting and the other guy now inside of the truck and began driving towards me. Now I had no other choice but to go into the woods. I darted to the right and went into the forest like a deer. I just started running like crazy and it was really thick. 
There were all kinds of trees and bushes and branches. I heard the first guy start to enter the woods a ways back from me. I kept running though, not knowing where the woods led or anything. After probably two minutes straight of going as fast as I could through the woods, I reached the other side. I saw a house and a massive yard. I kept running and no longer heard the guy behind me. When I made it closer to the house, I ran behind it. There, I caught my breath and tried to figure out what I was going to do. At this hour, I did not want to knock on the front door of the house. I didn't think they would answer. I waited for several minutes and then carefully headed back down their driveway to the street. It was a really long driveway and eventually I got back to the street that I had been walking on. The men and the truck were nowhere in sight. I continued my walk to the gas station but walked extremely close to the edge of the woods. That way, if I saw the truck coming, I could go back in. In fact, when I heard a car coming not long after I started walking again, I jumped into the woods. I hid and waited for it to pass. I couldn't tell if it was the truck or not, so I have no idea if it actually was, but I wasn't going to take any chances. Eventually, I did make it to the gas station. Then I walked back to my car, filled my tank with what I bought, and then made it home after what was a very memorable night. Looking back, I don't know what those men wanted or who they were. I'm really glad that I got away from them though.